Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and I'm going to introduce you to Peer to Spring Software's latest release, at least at the time this video was recorded. It's called Uniform Domestic Relations Forms Version 4, which I'll refer to as UDRF 4. It's one of three family law software packages in our legal software collection, the other two being Revised Ohio Child Support Guidelines and Ohio Spousal Support Calculator. In this video, I'll demonstrate the application and give some excellent and hopefully persuasive examples of how UDRF 4 outperforms the web forms for much the same reasons that tax preparers no longer do tax returns by hand. Basically, it's a case of today's law offices not having the luxury of wasting time doing the forms by hand. Incidentally, the UDRF web forms leave a bit to be desired. I'm talking about the ones that are that are published on the internet. As far as I can tell, you can't edit either the DOC versions or the PDF files. So unlike various uh, government web forms that you can complete online, and I think workers' compensation forms come to mind, this is not an the, the UDRF forms on the Supreme Court's website are not like that. I believe the doc files, if you if you uh, disable the protection that's on it or something, you can you can edit it. But even then, it's not very easy because it's it's not set up like a document. It's set up more like a table, a website, a web page. Um, and also, believe it or not, you've got to print the forms out and then complete them with a typewriter if you can't do them on screen. So you have to make corrections by either retyping the whole page or using whiteout with fees being what they are I doubt prospective clients want to pay for that sort of thing and even if your fees are on the other side they're competitive that's all the more reason you don't want to be wasting your time so what about these new forms uh, that that haven't been modified since 2013 well the first thing I noticed was that they were designed differently in a very basic way the old forms were styled specifically for pro se use. These new forms have provisions for an attorney signature and each form carries a big bold faced warning against pro se use. By contrast, the prior forms used the, the overused pronoun you, Y O U, which was not the best idea for reasons which became apparent as soon as he started using the forms and 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 lost track of who the affiant was and things like that so now things it's a little more organized in the signature departments and the designate the party designation areas thankfully the new forms they they abandon all that ambiguity and they do a much better job of not giving the public the mistaken impression that they can obtain a divorce simply by checking a few boxes without the assistance and advice of an attorney. Now before I start the demonstration, let me tell you that the UDRF 4 program itself is a massive one. It's easily twice the size of the prior version 3 and it goes from about 169 pages of forms to about 300 pages of forms. That means UDRF 4 more than ever before is an indispensable tool for handling family law cases. You, fin you may find that judges and magistrates actually welcome these forms because they're familiar with them and because they're developed by the Ohio Supreme Court for the specific purpose of filing divorces and dissolutions and the host of other forms that are covered in the entire set. Okay, let's get started. What you see on the screen right now is the main screen. If you've been using our award-winning child support app, our, our top-selling probate app, or just about any of our other applications, you're already familiar with this user-friendly design. Everything's one click away. The navigational tree U is on the right. Man, it's not on the right, it's on the left. The navigational tree view is on the left and it gives you instant access to about 300 pages of forms. You can see the list right here. <clears throat> I'll expand it a little more. Forms 22 to 31. And so everywhere there's a triangle, you can expand it to see more specific information, either subsets of forms or uh, various pages of a form. And now on the uh, right side, you see the general information worksheet. And basically the way this 
these two relate to one another is when you click on something on the left side it shows up on the right side so I want to go to the property affidavit page one I select it on the left it appears on the right okay so I, you know essentially to work on a client's uh, file <clears throat> you would follow the tree view from top to bottom starting with the general information fill that out child information and then the worksheets um, let's start by talking about the worksheets uh, if you haven't given it much thought you might ask yourself well why do the apps even have worksheets isn't it easier just to bring up the form and fill it out and the answer actually is an absolute no if you fill out the forms like that you'll end up wasting a lot of time entering the same information over and over again a simple example would be you take something as ubiquitous as the case number every one of these 300 pages of forms has the case number on it over the course of a case you might type that number dozens of times and so you might think well big deal it only takes a second or two to type the case number well true but you're not thinking it through when you multiply that with dozens of times and then you multiply that with the fact there's hundreds of other fields that are just like the case number and you're repeating them over and over and over again so that's why you would start to appreciate how worksheets speed things up and by the way speaking about case numbers our printed forms have the case number on every page not just the first page like the courts web forms do and, and for any law office or even a court person handling these forms that's another welcome example of a convenience that you've got when you're using UDRF4 and you have your forms all spread out on a desk and and you you want to you don't want to get them mixed up with someone else's forms incidentally you will see hundreds of conveniences like that in UDRF4 and you can think of it this way if you get it right in the worksheets in this inf then this information is copied to hundreds of forms automatically without the danger of making typographical errors like it's possible when you're when you're typing the same thing over repeatedly here's an even better example of worksheet worksheet utility the names, date of birth, and residency, residences of the children are repeated on Affidavit 1, Affidavit 3, Affidavit 5, Form 7, Complaint for Divorce, Form 9, Counterclaim, 15, Divorce Decree, 17, Petition for Dissolution, 18, Dissolution Decree, 20, Shared Parenting Plan, 21, The Parenting Plan, and let's not leave out the post-decree motions on Forms 26, 27, of course you're not going to be using all these forms on every case but you'll be using many or most of them in in a case and I should mention that half of these forms ask that you classify the children as to whether uh, not just the date of birth but whether they would be, for, be born before the marriage during the marriage and and I think they have up to five different uh, mandatory classifications uh, again are these hard things to do definitely not but again the point is you're doing this over and over again so it's not just the retyping that's bad enough I suppose but unless you've got it memorized you're also gonna waste additional time looking all these things up every time now I know I just mentioned it a moment ago but I'll repeat it anyway worksheets don't just save time they reduce errors by allowing you to avoid repeat typing the same basic information so let's get on with it uh, there's four types in UDRF there's four types of worksheets the general information worksheet that you've been looking at the child worksheet that assembles the varied information required by the different forms and I'm gonna bring that up I'll just put it in the background there there's all the information also that's not the time I wanted the YouTube file for this not that test file let's go back there's the child information worksheet and what's next Oh, the debt worksheet and the property worksheet and there's a whole bunch of subsets for the property worksheet because property has to be organized into categories and you'll find these categories repeated throughout the form set uh, they're real estate vehicles financial accounts stocks and bonds business interests retirement plans life insurance safety deposit boxes and basically any other property that doesn't fit into one of those categories uh, and there's worksheets for all of these different things you see them over here in the tree view on the left 
the file that I just opened has all these worksheets completed already. I'll breeze through them so you could, s and then let's let's go to the actual forms. Uh, I've shown you the uh, child information worksheet that's up right now. Uh, real estate, vehicles. You see how well, it's simple to go from one to the other. There's financial accounts, pensions, business interests, and there aren't any. Life insurance. It's a pretty simple example. Yeah, there's life insurance, a little tiny policy. Some items of furniture. It's not itemized. I don't think it's usually itemized anyway. Uh, safe deposit box, nothing. And the all-inclusive miscellaneous categories. That's all the worksheets. And let's see, there was one thing I wanted to mention about the um, property worksheets. Uh, and that's, let's go to something like financial accounts. Perhaps one of these accounts, or maybe real estate would even be better. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's say that this property at the lakes was inherited, and so it's really separate property. It was never in the other party's name. Uh, so let, uh, the, the way you can designate that, basically you're using one for plaintiff petitioner two, uh, p petitioner one, and then the number two for the either defendant or petitioner two, three for both, four for other, and if you put an asterisk behind it like you see there that designates it as separate property as opposed to marital property and uh, that becomes relevant as you fill out especially forms like the affidavits I, I would say affidavit number two before we move on notice the nifty way that monetary amounts could be marked as estimates ah I see right here in this column uh, if you read the affidavits you'll see that you can you can estimate uh, different amounts check that box and it comes out real nice you'll see when we're printing them out and I'm, I'll do that uh, in in a minute or two okay looking at the tree view you can see there are a lot of forms to choose from you, you've got to scroll through the list to see them all because the screen's not really big enough to display them all at one time and I did that just a moment ago you saw me scrolling through and even though you'll you'll need all these forms, you won't ever need them all at the time in in a single case. But w okay, well, actually, that might not be true for the affidavits. You especially if you have children, you'll you'll be using the affidavits in every case for sure. Uh, and you'll you probably be using all of the affidavits. And the form doesn't require any advanced math. You're hardly doing anything more than adding a column of numbers, but. When a client comes in and they say, well, he or she forgot an expense, they forgot to list little Billy's music lessons, for example, you don't, you don't, under, you don't uh, appreciate all the work that had goes into it. You're going to have to start whiting things out and then tracking it down because uh, l let's, let's do something here. Uh, I'll, I'm going to go to uh, another page, monthly child-related expenses. Let's put music lessons, music lesions. Hundred and fifty dollars a month. When I tab off this field, see that four sixty underneath there? Bang. So when I ch make a change, that's how fast it took. A fraction of a second. But if you're doing these things with a in a, it, with a static program like the web court forms, you change that total. That changed the the subtotal for for the 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 uh, this category C monthly child related expenses. But I I believe that those expenses are also summarized or totaled up somewhere else, and um, that figure dynamically updated as well. I think it's somewhere there total monthly perhaps um, but but the point is that the program did all that crunching just in the in a in the fraction of a second whereas if you're not using if you're using the courts forms you're gonna go through page by page looking for d dependencies like that and uh, and making the appropriate changes so it's nice to to be able to update your your money figures like that okay so continuing with the affidavits, when it comes to financially evaluating the marital state, nothing is more important than affidavit two. And that would be this one right here. Let's go to page one. Well, you can see that everything's uh, it, it's done in its entirety. We'll take a look at page two. This is an important one. It's really a, a financial statement of the, of the marital estate. 
Okay, there's nothing to fill out on page two. It's completely done. Page three. Okay, page three, done. You know, I'm guessing that there's not going to be anything to do on this form. Yeah, okay. Oh, all right. If the property was uh, claimed as separate, you have to put a reason in here. And this is left uh, over from a... Uh, a test file that we were using. I built that. I built, I built this uh, YouTube file from that, and, and so uh, in the case of that property, we mentioned that it was inherited. So I would put the reason here as to why I was treating it as separate property. So that I would have to do, and so in that whole, all that financial information that went on these five packed pages, all of that was filled in automatically. Uh, the bankruptcy here, okay, got to fill that out, and of course uh, the notarization, the date, but everything else is pretty much done automatically. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention as well is that uh, sometimes you get to things like financial accounts, and maybe there's more than there's more than uh, four financial accounts, or or more than six vehicles. What you get into is continuation pages and that's where you put overflow information if you have more than four more than more than four financial accounts or more than four pensions or more than four public stocks and what's nice about UDRF form UDRF 4 is that that sort of thing is automatic uh, you can go to uh, let's take I don't know if I have any of them like that but furniture and appliances Okay, there was a fifth item of furniture. It was the master bedroom furniture. And you can see how the, the program just automatically creates these, uh, from the worksheet again, creates these continuation pages and ties them in financially so that the item on page three, w or wherever it was we looked at, was it automobiles? Um, that, that total is, is, is integrated into the total of that section. UDRF4 has 50 custom continuation pages, so you, you almost can't find a section where you want to add information and there's not an available continuation page for it. Uh, now, we've skimmed, we've skimmed over two of the affidavits, but remember there are more than 200 pages more that are automatically completed to various extents based on your worksheet entries. Uh, the, the complaint for divorce is another form that is just about completed in its entirety with the exception of checking a box uh, to designate the grounds. Now another thing that I wanted to mention is that another big convenience is uh, the various memo fields that you find scattered on almost every page of every form. And, and what I'm talking about when I say memo field is that these are fields that are multi-line. When you look at the court web forms, you'll see that there might be four lines or two lines where you put your answer. And this happens in hundreds of places over the forms. When you use the court's web forms and you come to these fields, you've got to kind of harken back to the days of typewriters and carriage returns and type your entry one line. And when you get to the end of the line, then you will go to the next field and type the next line uh, just like a typewriter, uh, not at all like the convenience of a word processor. And that's, that's one of the things. I think I have, I made a note here that if I go to the separation agreement, where is the separation agreement? There. And I go to page four. Okay, yeah, there's an example of a uh, of a memo field. Now, normally, if you were to look at the web form, uh, there would be uh, two or maybe it looks like three lines of uh, where you can fill it in. Whereas with the um, with the program like this, what we've got is almost like a mini word processor. So when I type in here, and I have something in the Windows clipboard, I'm going to paste it in there. Well, no, I guess I'm not. Let's try it again. There we go. You can see that when I type this in, well, you can't really see it from here, but what's happened is that the page, this was pa pasted in there as one line of text. And, and it word wrapped and did all the things by itself so that when we look at this page, it will come out on the lines. Uh, it will come out exactly like you typed it. Uh, without having to try to figure out, okay, how many words fit on this line, and now I'm going to go to the next one. And, and again, when that happens over a hundred different places, it's a big time. It adds up to being another uh, time saver uh, when you're working with the forms. 
Now, there's two more things I wanted to point out. Actually, actually there's many more things, but I, I know I'm going to go long on this video, or I already have, so I'm only going to cover two. You couldn't notice it because I, I haven't shown you a printout yet, but whenever possible, we chose a larger type size than what's used in the court web form. So when it comes to reading the forms, bigger is better. Uh, so you'll find UDRF4's printed forms are actually easier to read, and the worse your vision is, like mine, the more you'll like it. This is true of the forms themselves, as well as the answers that you put into them. The other cool thing is that when you're completing a field and you've got, let's say, a little bit more text than it'll com comfortably fit in the field, what do you do? Well, there's not a lot you can do with web forms, but UDRF has a nice solution to that problem. Within reason, it shrinks the text font until the answer does fit in the court's forms allotted space and I'll try to show you an example in a moment uh, when I cover printing well which I'm gonna do right now actually so that was a nice segue into the subject of printing uh, UDRF prints like all of our other apps and that is that it doesn't print forms at all anyone who's used our programs is probably smiling saying uh, well yeah okay uh, but others would be saying what it's got to print forms. Yeah, you heard me right. UDRF4 doesn't print forms. Instead, what it does is it sends its output to your word processor where the forms can be previewed, um, modified, or formatted as necessary. In truth, nothing is typically necessary. These forms are ready to go, go, go. Uh, let's print Affidavit 2. Let me... I don't have to look at Affidavit 2 to print it. Um, but if I hit the button and I am actually and I'm looking at affidavit two, it'll pre-check the box that I'm looking at. In this case, I might say, let's go all the pages of it, and I'll click on preview print. And wow, that is fast. You know, it's confusing when we're designing the forms. We use those. We view the grid lines, and I am going to uh, turn that off so it's not so distracting there we go now it looks more like a sheet of paper very clean looking yeah looks good oh there's that estimate I was mentioned before you see how nice and clean that puts it in that this is an estimated amount that's kind of cool the way it does that I'm gonna find an example of where where it's shrinking something to make it fit well, right here. Okay. Cleveland Trust account number so-and-so. You can see that this is a little bit smaller. In fact, I can click on it and look at it. It's eight points, whereas your normal answer is ten points. So uh, this text wouldn't fit in there, but it's nice to have all of this information. So uh, the program shrank the font down a little bit so that it would fit in. Very cool. And I'm going to close by describing two more features. First is the default file. If you have fields that you almost always complete the same way, for example, a checkbox that you check every time in every filing, just about, you can set those fields in the default file so you never have to enter them again. And I'm going to give you a very simple example. Let's close the preview print, go back to the program, and in almost every, let's say I was in the default file, I'm not, I'm in the YouTube file, but let's say I was in the default file, okay, you know what, let's just get in the default file. Oh, this is a copy of the default file. If I want the default file, I could click on default file. I could have went to the open file dialog and cho chosen it as well, but it was in the history list. Uh, so you see it's just a blank file. but. I can, let's take something, and any of the fields work like this, but let's say we go to an answer, in an answer to a complaint for divorce. You know, it's already started to do things automatically, uh, and it will, based on the worksheet entries, but let's say that as a rule, we would typically admit the date and place of the marriage like almost 10 out of 10 times. You could go into the default file and check these boxes, pre-check them, so to speak, 
save the default file, clicking on the save button, and, and then you get the heck out of there. And what would happen would be that every time you start a new file, every time you start up the program, every time you click on new, every time you start up a new file, those two checkboxes would be pre-checked. So that's kind of that's kind of nice. Uh, and the cool thing about it is that all of the fields can be set like that. Uh, every checkbox, every edit box on every page. So all of those maybe hundreds of things that you do over and over and over again, um, those could all be preset as defaults. And every time you start up a new file, it's it's already there. That's that can be when you think it through and you get everything the way you want it that could be a huge huge time saver and the other thing finally with the web forms if you use the affidavits and the forms each one of them has got to be saved in a separate file and worked with independently and there's no interactivity between them uh, so a change in one that depends on information from the other is never going to uh, never going to transfer automatically in the UDRF4, all these hundreds of pages of forms are all in one little old file. And so when you open a client's file, you've got all of their forms right there at your fingertips. And, um, and that's, a, that's a huge advantage, actually. So if you're not convinced that UDF4 is the only efficient way for a law office to deal with these forms and affidavits, then I didn't do my job very well. And I hope that's not true. At any rate, it is that time, uh, so I want to thank you for taking your time from your busy schedule to watch this video, and I'm telling you that the pleasure was all mine, and I mean that sincerely, and if you have any questions about UDRF4, you can email me at ernie at puritasprings.com, puritas-springs.com, or you can give me a call at the phone number listed on our website. Uh, thanks again, and until next time, stay healthy and happy. And I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye.